Andrew Clennell. <coughs> Treasurer Andrew Clennell from Sky. The budget papers say, quote, the cash rate is assumed to gradually ease from around the middle of 2025 to reach 3.6 per cent by the middle of 2026. Do you agree with that no rate cut until mid-2025? And given Stephen Kennedy, who's behind me, is on the Reserve Bank board, <laughs> is 2.75 per cent inflation by Christmas a Stephen Kennedy prediction or a Jim Chalmers prediction? <laughs> Um, well, on the first bit of your question, it's a, it's a good opportunity to remind everyone uh, that the interest rate assumptions in the budget uh, are just informed by the Bloomberg survey of market economists. You know, the Treasury has to make an assessment. Ben's nodding because I've just given his uh, employer a big rap and mentioning uh, that we trust the, uh, that we rely on uh, the information from the Bloomberg survey. But the Treasury has to make an assumption and a, about the future trajectory of interest rates, the fairest, most appropriate way to do that is to uh, let the survey of market economists inform that. So that's the first part of your question. Uh, on the inflation forecast, of course, that they are Treasury forecasts in the usual way that Treasury forecasts all elements of the economy for governments of both political persuasions. Um, we don't sit in our office and write the forecasts. Uh, the Treasury team of very professional, very diligent people do that work for governments of both political persuasions. And what the Treasury forecasts recognise, uh, in a way that wasn't possible because of the timing of the Reserve Bank forecasts, uh, is that our uh, Treasury forecasts for inflation factor in what we're doing with the cost of living package and what we're doing with the broader fiscal settings. And that is the main reason why they are anticipating uh, that uh, inflation will get back to the target band uh, sooner than they were anticipating at Christmas time. Mark Riley. Treasurer Mark Riley from the Seven Network. I want to ask you about the decision not to means test the energy rebate uh, and the result of that being that the ultra-rich get it not just once, if they have four or five homes, they might get it four or five times, wacky do. Um, your explanation has been that the energy retailers uh, are unable to identify people by income and therefore won't be able to means test it. But haven't they already done that, Treasurer? Aren't they doing that this year with people who are on low incomes and pensioners and others? And isn't that data with the ATO and with Centrelink? And can't that be shared? And in the, in the age of AI, quantum computing and future technologies, can't we do that? OK, so on the um, difference between the last uh, energy bill rebates and the ones we announced last night, uh, there is actually a difference between identifying people on pensions and payments, which was the targeting of the first one, and uh, means testing by income. Uh, it is actually a very different um, uh, way of means testing and targeting. The two ways that you can do it with the existing systems are either pen people on pensions and payments or the whole, whole cohort, every household. Um, the uh, ATO has tax information, but they have no uh, arrangements to share that with energy retailers. We would have to change fundamentally the data sharing arrangements. That would take time and money in order to do that. So the judgment that we made uh, was that the most efficient uh, way to give cost of living relief to people on low and fixed incomes, but also people on middle incomes, to provide that cost of living relief in middle Australia as well, uh, was to provide it to every household. Now, people on the highest incomes uh, are not our focus, they're not our concern, uh, but in the absence of redesigning or designing a new system of data sharing and means testing uh, amongst the energy retailers, uh, we made the assessment uh, that the best way to do it was to provide it broadly. There are two elements of the cost of living package which are provided broadly, a tax cut for every taxpayer and energy relief for every household. And there are elements of the cost of living package that are more targeted. Almost a million renters get rent assistance. Uh, people uh, on the concession cards in the PBS get a longer freeze uh, in the cost of medicines. Uh, students get debt relief. Two broad parts of the cost of living package and some targeting as well elsewhere. 